Hello world, the United States Emergency Alert System, the one that manages broadcasting those scary messages, has been hacked. Severe vulnerabilities have been found in the decoder equipment which transmits these messages, vulnerabilities which could allow a bad actor to send fake alerts and even block legitimate ones. This is obviously not great news, and to give you an idea of the chaos that a fake alert can cause, I refer you to the alert sent to Hawaiians in 2018 that a ballistic missile threat was inbound, causing literal mass panic. In that case, there was no hack, but rather someone pressed the big red button by accident. As is evident, this emergency alert system is a critical piece of infrastructure in the US that exists to provide the president with capability to address the American people within 10 minutes during a national emergency. But it is also used for local emergencies, such as things like severe weather. But how does this system work? Well, when there's some kind of emergency, the authorities put out a message through IPOS, the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System. Alerts are then sent out via various technologies, for example, digital signage on roads, mobile phone alerts, and the emergency alert system, which includes television and radio. This is the section found to be vulnerable. So all radio and TV networks in the US are required to have one of these things tucked away in their studio, an emergency alert system decoder. In the event of an emergency, these boxes receive alerts through that iPod system. They then decode them, and since they're hooked up to a broadcaster system, they can then automatically broadcast the alert via TV or radio. And these boxes are where the problem lies. Security researcher Ken Pyle discovered multiple vulnerabilities in a particular model of decoder, which, when combined, give an attacker full access to broadcast their own alerts and block existing ones. Exactly how these vulnerabilities were discovered and how they can be exploited isn't being revealed, at least not yet. A proof of concept demonstration is going to take place at this year's DEF CON, which is only in a few days. In the meantime, the Department of Homeland Security has put out an advisory pleading with broadcasters to patch the vulnerability by updating their decoder software before details of the hack are exposed and paraded around at DEF CON. Next up, a new ransomware operation has been spotted, which doesn't make any sense. After encrypting a victim's files, the ransomware asks them to join a Discord server, where a bot gives the victim the decryption key for free. No ransom payment is demanded, and no files are exfiltrated and published on some dark website. Researchers were confused, to say the least, until they found out just who was behind this operation. The story begins with researchers at Sonatype discovering a bad actor typo-squatting the Python library requests. This is a popular HTTP library for Python. Our miscreants created three Python packages, each with a common typo of requests, such that when developers in a hurry made a typo, they downloaded the bad actor's malicious package by mistake instead of the legit one. Typo-squatting is, of course, nothing new. There are even online tools that will generate you a bunch of typos for any given word, tools which are apparently meant for marketers to find common typos for clever marketing campaigns, but also, of course, find a use in cyber miscreants. After being downloaded, the malicious Python package encrypts all files in documents, downloads, and pictures, after which it displays a message. If you close this window, your files will be encrypted forever. Unfortunately, we don't have a key. Join the Discord server to get one. At this point, you just assumed the bad actors were too lazy to build their own dark websites to communicate with victims, and instead were just using Discord to talk to them so they could negotiate a ransom payment. However, that just wasn't the case. After joining the server, researchers noticed a channel called Ransomware Notifications, where a bot was posting victims' decryption keys for free. It's, it's nonsensical. I mean, the malware was encrypting files, then immediately offering to decrypt them free of charge. The researchers did some googling and found a GitHub account with the same name as the owner of the Discord server, B8FF. Here they found a public repository containing all of the malicious code used by the ransomware. And linked in the GitHub's bio is a YouTube channel where whoever is behind this stunt has posted videos of them using cheats in Minecraft, Roblox, and CSGO. Bit random. However, at this point I think it's obvious we're not dealing with some kind of hardened cybercriminal. Confused, researchers simply messaged the guy via his Discord server and finally got some answers. He explained that he was a school kid and this ransomware was just a project that he developed for fun. Based in Verona, Italy, B8FF describes himself as a school-going learning developer who has recently been intrigued by exploits and the ease of producing them. 
However, he doesn't seem to understand that whilst his project isn't malicious per se, the grey area he's operating in is a pretty dark shade of grey. I mean, you don't know what a victim might do after having their files encrypted, especially if a victim isn't very technical. They might do something dumb like delete the encrypted files in a panic. In total, the Python packages were apparently downloaded about 258 times, so there's a good few people who had their files locked up. That being said, I personally wouldn't be too hard on the kid, as whilst this project was obviously a very bad idea, I think it's clear he didn't have any ill intent, and it does sound like he's only 15 or something. But in fairness, pulling something like this off at that age is really quite impressive. But hey, if you think I'm being too lenient, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm really quite interested to hear your guys' opinion on this one. Next up, Twitter has confirmed that a zero-day vulnerability was used to expose the data of 5.4 million accounts. The vulnerability itself was actually reported to Twitter via the bug bounty program. A white hat hacker discovered that the bug in Twitter's API could be leveraged by a bad actor to check whether a certain email address or phone number had a Twitter account associated with it and what that Twitter account's ID is. The White Hat reported the bug properly and was rewarded $5,000 for his efforts. Twitter, of course, fixed the problem, but not soon enough. It turns out that before the bug was reported, it had already been exploited by a bad actor who used it to build a list of 5.4 million Twitter accounts. Presumably, the bad actor used already public email address and phone number lists, testing them against Twitter's systems, looking for matches. After building a list of Twitter IDs and corresponding emails, they then further scraped public data, eventually building a database of users, including things like screen name, location, verified status, and of course, the all important email addresses and phone numbers. On the face of it, a list of Twitter usernames and their email addresses might not seem that valuable. However, the miscreant, who goes by Devil, put the stash on sale for $30,000 on breach forums, but did eventually sell it for less than the asking price. What makes a database like this so valuable is the potential in spear phishing attacks against high-value Twitter accounts. After all, the database includes the follow account of each user and their verification status, so a bad actor could just sort the list by those and try to fish celebrities out of their passwords, eventually using any stolen accounts for Elon Musk crypto scams, which can be quite lucrative. Another issue caused by this breach is that there are a number of political dissidents living in oppressive regimes who use anonymous Twitter accounts. Twitter encourages this, having recently launched an Onion site. However, if the owners of these anonymous Twitter accounts have used their personal email address or phone number tied to the account, then they could be in trouble, as whilst the threat actor who purchased this dump probably has no interest in outing political dissidents, privately bought databases often eventually become public once their owner has squeezed most of the usefulness out of it. So one day, the owners of anonymous Twitter accounts on this list could be outed. This video was made possible by PlexTrack, the cybersecurity reporting and workflow management platform that empowers continuous assessment and effective collaboration between teams to ensure you win the right security battles. Create assessment reports in half the time and collaborate throughout the remediation lifecycle. Centralize your remediation efforts across all scans, assessments, and audits with powerful risk visualizations, scanner and ticketing integrations, and enhanced analytics. Communicate risks clearly across your team and in real time, working more efficiently and effectively with PlexTrack. You can claim your free month of the PlexTrack platform exclusively for Satonic viewers using the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching. Sources can of course be found in the description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.